it's musical here and I am back to tell you guys I have a video for you it's a what if video and the fact is well our pokey Rompa died pretty quickly because we all died at chapter three meaning we all got the killer wrong I probably could have figured it out if I hadn't been such a dummy that day and been like, oh, it's this person, it's this person, it's this person, when I knew it was the other person, but they were with me. And I'm like, that can't be you, it can't be. Oh, I don't want you to die. Daddy, I, I, I felt bad. I really felt bad. But anyways, I decided to do my own little what if they survived chapter three and let's recap everything. By everything, I mean every single thing, including dorm rooms, uh, characters, everything. All right, give me a second and we can begin this little video. It's all right, this is the cast list of everyone so here is everyone and by the way these are all of um, the all of the cloth clothing sprites were done by me so if as you can see the mencino um charmander luxio lapani age slash and lycanroc as well as the Leafeon were all done by me yes even if the luxio sprite looks very official Thank you, I tried my best. All right, so this is everyone, and we did change in, uh, we did change out someone. Their name was Dewdrop, and they were a duo, and they were the ultimate explorer. However, they never talked, so they were, well, not included. All righty, let's get into this. So, we have Percy, the polytoad, who is the uh, ultimate roller skater, Sinna, the Mencino, the ultimate barista, dipshit, Spupa, the ultimate translator, yes, I don't get it either, Burn Life, the Age Slash, ultimate bodyguard, Light, the Lexio, the ultimate sports battler, and the Lapunny, the ultimate animator, which was me, um, Mob, the Purloin, ultimate thief, Hawkeye, the Lycanroc, who is the ultimate hunter, CTC, Pseudo Widow, the ultimate rapper, Josephine, the Rabami, ultimate uh, couture, Jeez, I think I missed that last time. Um, Leafer, the Leafeon, who is the ultimate gardener, if I remember correctly. Um, Lucas, the mean foo, the ultimate fan fiction podcaster. Yanwan, the Yamask, the ultimate butler. Spike, the Charmander, the ultimate pilot. And Heya, the Apom, the ultimate stamp collector. As well as Hatches, the ultimate gunslinger. Now, I'll explain their dorm room arrangements real quick because, well, Doppelganger and Gravion, I'll explain this. They were the co hosts for, they were the host and co hosts for the season. Um, Ga Gravion wasn't introduced till, um, chapter two, and Gra Doppelganger, well, he's Doppelganger. Anyways, the dorm arrangements because there's only four girls. Four girls! That means. <laughs> There are only four people who were girls in this. So, Bun, Dipshit, Josephine, and Trixie were the only girls in the season. Sadly. <laughs> Anyways, for the dorm arrangements, it was Dorm A, Dipshit, and Hawkeye. So, a girl and a guy. <laughs> dorm B, Patches and Hay. Dorm C, Trixie and Yon Wan. Dorm D, CTC and Josephine. Dorm E, Cinna and Bun. I, I find that very punny. He is Cinna Bun. Um, Dorm F, Light and Lucas. Dorm G, Spike and Leaper. And Dorm H, Burnlock and Mauve. Yeah, that was the arrangement for rooms. Alright, so this is Doppelganger. Is a Clefable and a Gengar mashed together to make one being or so. Anyways, so um the drawing I did not make, but the sprite I did uh sprite edit Gengar and Clefable together. 
and this is what it came out to be. It looks very nicely done, mostly. And yeah, looks pretty good. I think Doppelganger looks fabulous. He really does. And this is Gravion, a cross between a Glaceon and a Vaporeon. Let me tell you, she is really pretty. And she was made by my best friend, Nordic. And I love Nordic to death. She is one of my best friends. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Here is a funny moment from uh, this role play. I had to include this because of the drawing and the fact I took this a while ago and I just loved it. So this is when the role play first started and it says Spupa literally fucking walks, guys. And when I say she walks, she fucking walks. And Patches drew dipshit with legs walking. And it was just... It was in the moment. I was dying. Like, I was crying from laughter. This was hilarious to me. And here we go. Here we start into our Pokerumpa with 16 remaining. This is the full cast. And this is before, let me explain, there was a Dunsparce, but they were switched to Patches, the gunslinging... Cactured, and I'm really glad they did that because I love their character. Anyways, after everyone woke up and found out about the rules, there was a group formed called the Walkie Talkie Group, where there was where Spike, the Charmander, gave Trixie, Cinna, Hawkeye, uh, Burnlock, Bun, and Light the six people, seven people in the group in total. He gave them all walkie-talkies in order to keep each other safe, so they could inform each other if something went wrong. As seeing as most of them were not roommates, the only two in the group that did have a roommate in the group were Bud and Cinna. They had an ideal to keep each other updated on what was going on. During this time, Dipshit found time to interact with Yomwon. Yomwon was busy dusting and talked to Dipshit, even though Dipshit could not speak, and it was understandably very cute. It was like Dipshit was not afraid of Yomwon and considered him like a friend. Hey and Patches fought over the refrigerator as a place to live. Hey would hang in the top and Patches with it sleep in the refrigerator. None of us understood why, but he did. <laughs> and yeah, that's how it happened. So, everyone, this is the first death. The motive was a video, cassette tapes, that showed their family members dying. Dipshit was the first to pass, and this is what it said when what happened when we found the body. What awaited Patches was a terrifying sight. It was Dipshit's scorched, scorched body lying on the tiles. Her body was bitten, scratched, and burned. Inside her body seems to be what was seemed to be hollow because of the probably because of the heat disintegrating her insides. Dipshit, the ultimate translator, has been murdered. The evidence was burns, gash, mark, bite marks, disintegrated inside cassette tape. It had cassette tapes had been destroyed. Cassette tape labels mostly scratched off, except for the letter T. Dipshit's collection. She collected all the tapes and put them in her room. Light, CTC, and spikes destroyed tapes. Double Gengar's account is shocking, rather pun. Bun's account, the tapes being burnt. Patches account hearing the cassette tapes fall and burning. The doppelganger files a dipshit. Status deceased. Approximate time of death 3 a.m. Cause of death a large slash on the body. They went through the they went through and fought and fought about who did it. But all the evidence led up to one person. And the person even admitted themselves that they did it. Mm. 
Might, the ultimate brawler, had been found guilty, and it was punishment time. A chain con comes out of nowhere and grabs Light by the neck, dragging him to the large Coliseum. Light tries to escape, but it's impossible. Doppelganger throws a metallic ball, and a giant robotic golem appears. He tries his best to fight it, but his attacks don't seem to work. It seems to be made out of impenetrable material. Light dodges his attacks, but eventually the golem punches a hole through Light's body, turning him to what's essentially a Luxio donut. Light's dead body lays on the ground of the Coliseum, and all the remaining students look at it. The Gladiator's Battle. Fourteen remain. After this trial, most of them were shaken up, mainly people of the walkie-talkie group, as they had seen one of their best friends, the most innocent of them all, killed. No one understood why. No one knew what to feel. It left them depressed. They didn't know why this happened, but it happened. Later, at the beginning of the chapter two, Gravion was introduced as a new character. Gravion, the Glaceon and Vaporeon fusion, was introduced to the camp contestants, or not contestants, participants. She was known to be as <sighs> Doppelganger's sister, and boy, did Spike have a crush on her. He fell in love with her instantly, even though she said no. She denied his affection, but he still went after her. During this chapter, Bun and Burnlack grow close as they began, as she begins to be an emotional support for Burnlack. Burnlack, not feeling, not knowing how to feel emotions, finally learned them with Bun. Bun being very aware of emotions and helping him understand them. After Light's death, they were all torn up. They just watched one of their best friends die. And as soon as they grew close enough, they began to, they fell in love and began a relationship. Yeah, they felt they they began a relationship in a killing game. Don't ask why that happened. It happened and it's adorable. <laughs> the remaining these are the remaining participants. Right. <laughs> Had to make sure something. The motive was given. I honestly just forgot the motive. Hold on. <laughs> I I really forgot the motive. Um so yes, a motive was given. It was supposed to scare everyone in bits. Oh wait, I just remembered. It was the wish motive. The motive was to, uh, they had three wishes. They could have wished for them to escape, but not others to escape. They could also wish to bring back someone to life. And as you saw, a murder occurred. When Trixie skated to the pool, they found something near the pool, next to the pool. There were CTC shades at the end at the pool's edge, they looked inside and found CTC's corpse. At the bottom of the pool, CTC, the ultimate raptor, has been murdered. There are wet, many wet footprints up around the scene. Also, we never knew this, and they were like, it, it's a Pokemon that you would not think is thick. CTC is thick, man. He is very thick. Um, so, the doppelganger file says, CTC, deceased. Approximate time of death, 6 a.m. The location of where the body was found, in the pool. Blunt force trauma at the school. Evidence, the doppelganger file. CTC's time of death and cause of death. CTC shades next to the pool. This is the evidence, by the way. <laughs> Missing toolbox hammer. Broken toolbox lock. The lock was slashed or clawed off. Footprints, the wet footprints at the end of the doormat. End of the doormat. Blood on the kitchen floor, probably where CTC died. Clean hammer in the sink. Murder was, weapon was thoroughly washed. CTC saw layers. 
I don't know, Minaj. I'm really feeling really worried, Minaj. Heads always spinning like a cyclone in my head. Feel like I'm haunted hunted by a wolf this guy is always watching me i don't feel so good i'm gonna be gone soon i know it tell my family i love them scratches on the floor ctc's rocky body was damaged making scratches on the floor coming from the dining hall book about multiple personality disorder it says that pokemon with multiple personality disorder can change physical appearance and be triggered at time So CTC is dead, and everyone starts talking about who could have done it. It comes into light that one of the Pokemon there suffers from multiple personality disorder. Giving up, the Pokemon told them who did it. Hawkeye. The ultimate hunter was found guilty. It was confirmed that his old, his person, multiple personality did it, and soon he was to be punished. Hawkeye is placed into a trash bag and dragged to the conveyor belt. Hawkeye struggles, but eventually gets out of the trash bag. For some reason, he isn't able to get off the conveyor conveyor belt. It leads straight to an incinerator. He tries to run for his life, but the conveyor belt is too fast. Hawkeye is incinerated alive. The living garbage is no longer alive. Hawkeye, the ultimate hunter, has been executed. Doppelganger. Wait, we've got ourselves a little troublemaker. Gravion. Oh, who is it, Big Brother? Someone has been breaking the rules. Really? That's so awful. There have been reports of sexual indulgence on campus. I pity them. I'm so mad. Hormonal teens are such a drag. Oh, thanks. They damn the man an encore. More punishment, you say? Let's give them another show. You too, Spike. Spike was is in front of the stage. Some cheery music starts to play. Spike has attached multiple strings and made to dance like a puppet. The blades ignited by a rope start to slowly burn. Squash. That's all, folks. Spike was killed. This is the last one I have of these Pokey Rumpa um, title cards. They were made by CTC's user, and then CTC died, sadly. And, yeah. We loved him. And then they remain. This is where we get to Chapter 3. This is where everyone failed at the murder. Well, actually, I, I failed mostly. <laughs> it is... Spike is back alive, but all his bones and his body are broken, including his walkie-talkie. I mean, after the death, by the way, all the walkie-talkies were thrown either thrown away, destroyed, or kept away. So no one talked to each other on the walkie-talkies anymore and decided to walk, talk to them in, each other in person. Bud and Mav get into a fight right after the trial. Bud was annoyed by Mav. And was frankly fed up with him. Mob was losing, by the way. <laughs> he did not win at all. Bun was the Bun was winning until Patches decided to break them up. And now here we go to the motive. Not really much happened. Uh, we basically all died while the motive. We were waiting for a motive. So the motive is a collar around the net. After three days, everyone gets decapitated by the um, collar if no one has killed. Which leads us to our death. Hey, the ultimate stamp collector, was killed at 2 a.m. in the theater. Cause of death was blunt for his trauma. For the evidence for him... Blood wound on top of his head. A spotlight was covered in blood underneath. Puddle of cold water. A walkie-talkie broken from water damage. This one has battery. A big heart and a spotlight that isn't big enough for injury. And then, as Mauve went into the next room over, he went back to the second floor and there was Yan Wan's body. Stuck in the library. Yan Wan was deceased. Found at three... Time of death was 
3.30 a.m. He was found in the library and he had a stab wound through the head. He was missing in his mask, which was found in the trash can in the theater. There were books in his hand when reading R.I.P. <laughs> Pink fluff and a walkie-talkie. In both area was there a walkie-talkie found. Sorry, I'm trying my best. Oh, wait, I don't have anything for this. So, basically, it goes around. Everyone dies because no one gets the kill or fight. But in this version, so we enter the what-if scenario. Josephine, the old... <laughs> Josephine and Senna were the two people who really knew about Bun's fluff issue. How she shedded it every one, twice every year. Trixie proposed that Burnlack knew, but however, Burnlack did not know until after the murder had occurred. Josephine had a fur coat. So, what if the group decided to actually accuse Josephine and get it right? Josephine, having done it, would have made obvious sense. Oh. <sighs> It's very uh, Josephine here because he did not have that for Josephine. And this is what would happen. I don't have a description for this either. So let's just say Josephine was going for Jules and she got stabbed because she was being greedy. And here remains the... Here are the remaining participants. Leifer, Bun, Burnlack, Spike, Trixie... Patches, Mauve, and Senna. Mauve and Leifer grow closer, and Leifer decides to confess his feelings for Mauve. Mauve scoffs at this and says that he is not interested in Leifer. Leifer accepts this as he cannot force anyone to like him. And they set aside their differences. Spike, who was still waiting for an answer from Cinna as he confirmed that he was gay for Cinna, Cinna is confused. He doesn't know what to say and decides to take him up on his offer and decide and starts growing close. Also during this chapter, Cinna, trying to make sure he doesn't evolve, falls off a bookshelf. Yes. In this world, I don't think Everstones exist, and he doesn't want to evolve. So he wants a Sam and Cena forever. He does not want to evolve. I don't know why, and that's... I find it really cute that he doesn't want to evolve, but I really want to know why. Yes, they didn't tell me why. <laughs> oh yeah, th I found this art. This art does not belong to me. Neither do any of the previous art of the executions and such. Those belong to Patches, Nordic, and other people. But I thought this would be really cute to include. Bun during this chapter would start, you know, putting little bows in her hair. You know, try, trying to find a way to cope with the death of all her friends. So I thought that would be really cute for her to do. As the time comes, the motive happens. The motive this time would have most likely have been hallucinations. Everyone starts to hallucinate about their dead friends, and Leifer was killed in response to this. I don't have evidence of why Leifer would get killed, but Leifer is dead. Everything comes to light that Trixie did the murder. Trixie Dunn did murder. Surprising, right? Trixie Dunn did murder! <laughs> but Trixie did the murder, and it shock to everyone. Trixie explains that the death of Josephine and her killing shocked everyone, but it hurt her the most. And soon, Trixie was executed, falling to her death, doing a favorite thing she wanted, she loved to do. Roller skating. And then, there were fun, burn locks, patches, moths, Spike and Senna. 
Mauve, at the death of his best friend, contemplates everything. He had lost his best friend and lost his other best friend previously. He just contemplated what was going on with his life. Senna becomes, begins to grow away from the group. It seemed like something was wrong, but no one could put their finger on it. Spike noticed that too, and as he tried to approach him, Senna wouldn't allow him. Bun was the only one who could really talk to him. Being her, his roommate, she did her best. Senna confides to Bun that he doesn't feel his best. He doesn't feel worth it. He doesn't feel like he should live. Bun quickly retorts this and says he deserves to live as much as he needs to. And that he means the world to all everyone. Burnlack goes to... to <laughs> Brandlock goes and to use the final area, open up. Looking through this, he is very shocked at his findings. And as another death happens, another <coughs> killer is arrives. Maul was found dead in the office. He was stabbed. He was stabbed and killed. No one understood why Maul died, but he did. I'm scared of him. It comes to light that Cinna was the murderer, and Cinna confesses. He told him that he didn't feel like himself anymore. He didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve to live. And as Spike and everyone else tried to convince him otherwise, it was too late. The deed was done. It was time for him to say goodbye. As he said goodbye, he said one last thing. I love you, Spike. No matter what. <laughs> and Senna was drowned in a big cup of coffee, being the ultimate barista. Though he was the ultimate cinnamon roll, we loved him. This is an alternate to Chapter 5, because they told me that really didn't seem like in character. So, here's the alternate. Senna dies. Senna passed away from the knife wound, and it comes into the fact that Mauve did it. Mauve was very depressed about his friends dying, and wanted just to get over with it and leave. He was shot down in a safe room and killed. Four remain. Spike, Burnlack, Bun, and Patches. They were sent to another trial to finally figure out who was the mastermind. They had to go back through every case and feel, figure out what didn't make sense. Burnlight brings up the point about the body of Dipship, saying how hollow it was inside. That with the amount of lightning that Luxios could produce, it wasn't he wouldn't be able to burn the insides of Dipship. Which then brings into light a that Dipshit couldn't have been killed. He theorized that it was her shedding her skin as she was coming something else. And it could have been just a fake. A puff of smoke then appears, and there was Dipshit, or should I call her Harmony? The Vivalon. She begins to explain about how the world outside of there has become so despairful, and she was how doing them a favor, and that they didn't appreciate what she was doing. She, to take the highway out, decided to take the best way she could out, and endured every execution imaginable from this series. This season. Oh, yeah. So, there were five remaining. Dipshit take, took every execution, holding Dr. Gengar and Gravion's hands in, during this. And, she, like that, she was gone. The four survivors reflect on everyone who died. Light, Yawan, Dipshit, though they didn't care for Dipshit, Josephine, Sita, Hay, Hawkeye, Lucas, Leifer, Trixie, CTC, and Mauve, as well as Light. Light, who is 
unfairly executed brought tears to Bun's eyes mostly. She brought it up sometimes and couldn't face the facts he was gone. The four survivors escaped and made their way out. They soon later join up with Future Foundation in the hopes of stopping this from ever happening again. And that, that, my friends, is what if Pokey Rumpa? If we had survived chapter four or chapter three, this is what probably might have happened. Probably not. This was only my theory. I originally did not have Bun surviving. Bun was actually going to be Chapter 5's killer until I realized that would mean no girls would have survived. And we need at least one girl surviving because there were four girls and if we did not have one survive, that is pretty bad. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know the cast of Hokey Rumpa have been waiting for this for a few days and I'm so glad I finally finished it because I was being lazy and not finishing it, but I'm glad I finished it, and I hope everyone enjoyed it, I hope everyone has a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys later! Bye!